This year, Cisco changed its certifications and really streamlined them. At the associate level, you have three certifications now. The CCNA, which was really uh, streamlined and a lot of the materials were removed from the CCNA and put back at the higher level. So the CCNA is, is really uh, redesigned and uh, like I said, a lot of the topics were removed and just down to the essentials that you need for the associate level. Then you have the Cyber Ops Associate, which is a cybersecurity uh, certification. And the Cyber Ops Associate's on its own track. And what's interesting is they're going to be releasing this Cyber Ops Professional. So you can get the professional level uh, certification for cybersecurity operations. So that's pretty cool. And then another associate certification that I'm pretty interested in, and it's the focus of these videos that I'm going to make right now, is the DevNet Associate. So the DevNet Associate deals with, with network programmability, network automation, and virtualization. So it's pretty cool. It's kind of like DevOps, but for networking. So it's pretty cool. Let's click on it and see a little bit more about it. I'll scroll down. There it is, the 200-901 Dev ASC. We'll click on that. And then what I can do is scroll down and go to the exam topics. So if we look at the exam topics, you can see here that there is software development and design, 15% of the certification, understanding and using APIs, Cisco platforms and development, which is 15%, understanding using APIs, 20%, application deployment and security, 15%, infrastructure and automation, 20%, and network fundamentals, 15%. Now, we can open these up and actually look at the various topics under each one. So under software development and design, let's just grab a few things that stand out here. You need to learn the data formats of XML, JSON, and YAML, and relate those to Python data structures. So parsing the data format into Python. So that's pretty interesting. You need to learn about uh, development methods like agile development, lean development. You need to know uh, organizing code. Uh, let's say Python is one of the focuses of the course into methods and functions, as well as classes and modules and how that's used to organize your code. Common design patterns like model, view, controller, and observer. And then the advantages of version control systems like Git and knowing how to use certain commands in Git to clone a repository or add or remove a repository or do a commit uh, or push or branch a repository from one to another and merge files, things like that. Uh, branching, merging, things like that. So you'll need to know that stuff from the command line with Git. Now let's, we'll close that and we'll look at understanding and using APIs. So you need to know about REST APIs, which basically use HTTP. They're done over the web or over the, over the internet using HTTP protocol. And you need to know common usage patterns related to webhooks. So writing programs that will talk to other programs or writing programs that will talk to websites and things like that. So REST APIs, you also need to know how to, let's see here. You need to know the response codes, HTTP response codes. You need to know the basics of how HTTP functions so that you can use REST APIs. Okay, you need to know about API authentication mechanisms like basic custom token and API keys. You need to know about remote procedure calls along with REST, so the different types of API styles. And look at this construct a Python script that calls a REST API using the requests library. So that's very specific. So that's interesting. And that's 20% right there, APIs and REST APIs. Then Cisco platforms and development. So this is one that's very Cisco centric because Cisco has its own SDKs, uh, Python SDKs that can be used to talk to Cisco devices. So you can see here, Cisco network management platforms and APIs, APIs to talk to Meraki, Cisco DNA Center, ACI, all kinds of things. Let's see here. 
Cisco's compute management platforms, collaboration platforms like WebEx Teams, and WebEx, um, security platforms that can have their own APIs, like to talk to Firepower or Cisco Umbrella or Cisco Threat Grid, things like that. And then device level APIs to use basically uh, REST APIs to talk to Cisco routers and switches using iOS XE or the NX OS. So these are the operating systems on those Cisco routers and switches. Okay, also about a little bit, you need to know a little bit about DevNet, Cisco DevNet, where there's all these free resources that people and things uh, and learning tools at Cisco DevNet, like that Cisco DevNet has its own uh, sandbox, code exchange, learning labs, so all those things as well. Then um, concepts of model-driven programmability. So model-driven programmability, referring to Yang, RESTConf, and NetConf uh, in a Cisco environment. Uh, let's see here. And let's see here. Uh, construct code. So write some code, possibly here in Python, to obtain a list of network devices using Meraki. Manage spaces in uh, WebEx teams and participants. Or obtain a list of clients and hosts seen on a network using Meraki or Cisco DNA Center. So that's pretty interesting. It's Cisco's network programmability stuff. Very interesting. Also, you've got application deployment and security. Let's take a look at what's here. Concepts like edge computing, cloud computing, um, virtualization, virtual machines. Describe the components for a CI CD pipeline. So continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline when you're developing applications. A Python unit test. The contents of a Docker file, understanding not only virtualization, but containers like Docker. Let's see here, applying um, encryption. Let's see here, uh, security issues related to security protection, encryption, storage. Tools like firewalls, DNS load balancers, and how they relate when you're deploying an application online. Security threats, the top OWASP, uh, the top 10, the OWASP top 10 threats, such as cross-site scripting, SQL injections, and certificate request forgeries. Um, you need to know, it's, it's a given that you must know a little bit about Python to get the certification as well as Linux. Notice here there's utilize bash commands for managing files, uh, navigating through a uh, directory and, and the file system, Envir knowing about environmental variables, because you're gonna might maybe be using those in some of your scripts, and identify the principles of DevOps practices. All right, we'll close that. We'll look at the last two sections, infrastructure and automation. So more about automation, and there's some interesting topics here as well such as network simulation tools like Viral and Pyats, um, automation tools like Ansible, Puppet, Chef, and Cisco NSO. Um, identify the workflow being automated by a Python script that uses Cisco APIs, including once again, uh, uh, ACI, Meraki, Cisco DNA, DNA Center, or RESTConf. And you can see here more about um, an Ansible playbook, um, a bash script that's automating a workflow, uh, RESTConf or NetConf queries, Yang models, interpret a unified diff, and you can see the code review process. Okay, so that's this is pretty interesting. And then the last section is probably the most basic. It's just on network fundamentals. It's only 15% of the certification exam. And it, you need to understand VLANs, MAC addresses, IP addresses, routes, subnet masks, common uh, networking components like switches and routers, um, the difference between the management and control plane on a Cisco device, uh, basic IP services like DHCP, NAT, DNS, things like that. Um, common protocol port values, you'll need to know that SSH is on port 22, Telnet port 23, HTTP 
port 80, HTTPS, port 443, and so forth. Um, connecti connectivity issues, since you're remotely managing or remotely automating, you need to know what could what hiccups could happen um, and cause problems with communication, like network address translation, or ports being blocked, or maybe there's a proxy or a VPN or something like that that would need to be negotiated if you're gonna be able to get through and um, manage those devices remotely using remote procedure calls and APIs and the things that could block that. And explain the impacts of network constraints on applications. So yeah, the basically all of the walls that an application has to go through to talk to a device over the internet or over the network. So that's pretty interesting. Cisco DevNet, it has these different uh, exam topics and it's a new certification from Cisco.